The snow is melting. Winter is almost over. And the grass will start growing soon. My name is Purovjak. I'm a shepherd from Ulanul, in the province of Hofskol. I've been taking this trip for 40 years. I'm the elder. I'm in charge of the 10 families on this migration. Let's see if we can get some reception. Thank you, The subscriber you dialed is busy now. Please read that. Oh. Oh. We are the Darhats. We move over great distances, much further than other nomads. This is the last great migration in Mongolia. Every year we travel over 400 kilometers. We pass through several districts and villages. We're now heading towards our spring pastures, where it's warm. Just look at those youngsters. They've got so much to learn. Got to watch them all the time. They don't know where to go, where to set up camp. Got to keep an eye on everything. These rings around the sun mean that the weather is changing. A storm is coming. We have to move carefully. We need to find shelter soon. This is a big storm. We've still got 150 kilometers before the next town.
This is Yeti weather. 2013 was a horrible year. How will I feed my animals this year? Last winter was tough here in the Darhat Valley. We lost half our animals. Another winter like that and we're done. It's really tough. I get up at dawn every day to get the truck ready. We get started by 6 or 7 a.m. My job is to haul the heavy stuff to the next camp. I had to build a fire under the truck. The crankcase was frozen. It's really cold. It's okay now. We can go. There are about 160 people left in our herding community. About a third of us now live in towns. Mostly children in boarding schools and the elderly who can't move. The rest of us still follow our animals. When I enter a town, it feels like I'm in a prison. We store our winter gear in this village. Our people now live behind fences and walls. No more cattle, not even a horse to ride. How can people live like this? Batsai Khan, the projectionist, took over the old film club. He got the projector from his father. During the communist time, we had a film club in town. We used to meet here for movie nights. We're now restoring these old Russian films. They're an important part of our past. It's our history. Whatever happens in the future, these films will remain. During World War II, Hitler invaded Russia. Hordes of fascist cannibals attacked our Russian brothers without warning. The Mongols helped them by sending supplies. Tons of meat, furs, and even gold and silver were shipped to the front. Dorj was the hero among shepherds. He led caravans to the front. He requisitioned thousands of camels from all over the country. They gathered in Ulaanbaatar. 
From there, they would travel to the railroad at the border. Dorsch never failed. He was the perfect caravan master. The war caravans were led by the best shepherds. They were called the Mingan Malchen, the shepherds of thousands. Those who had increased their flocks beyond the quota of a thousand head. In the early 90s, communism collapsed. You couldn't buy flour, sugar, shoes, or even a pen. The Russian suppliers had pulled out. There was nothing left. How could we send our children to school in those conditions? So all of my seven children became herders, like me. There's no future in this life. We're always short of money. That's why I want to go find work in the city. Drive a big truck for a mining company. Get a salary. These days, we're free to move where we like, but it's not so simple. If there's not enough grass in one place, we'll have to move to another county. Then we have to pay a tax. It's become really hard with all these taxes. It's also difficult for the kids to be in boarding schools far from their parents. Instead of shuffling the children back and forth, why don't they have a nomadic school? But no teacher would take this kind of life. <laughs> they prefer the comfort in town. Did you round up the axe? Where's that red horse? Look, it's running away. My children are tired of packing and moving all the time. They don't have the heart for this kind of life anymore. The new generation is becoming soft. They've lost their ability to survive. Nomadic life will soon disappear in Mongolia. Before us, our parents traveled these routes, as did our ancestors for millennia. The government is pushing us to become farmers and shopkeepers, but they don't really understand our ways. If I settle down, my life will become meaningless. We're not made to live in towns. Moving with the seasons is our way of life. We belong to the clan of swans. 
The swan is our totem. We follow them as they migrate. In summer, we live between our father and our mother mountains. Our animals graze here and raise their newborn. There are over 300 lakes in the Darhat Valley. Like us, the swans return here every year to lay eggs and hatch their young. I've been keeping this diary for a long time. I record everything that happens inside and outside this tent. I was born in Ulanul County. I entered school in 1957. Then I worked in the Negdel, a collective farm. I became a supervisor. After my military service, I got married. My first wife stole my money, so I sent her back to her parents. I heard her needs a wife, so I started looking around. I remember how we got married. I kidnapped her. We escaped along this very trail. About 40 years ago. You were cute and chubby, just like you are now. He was 28, and I just turned 20. We fell in love. I stole you away. I couldn't formally ask for her hand. There was no official wedding. My parents refused him, so we eloped in the night. There are wolves around here. It's that red wolf again. Wolves attack our herd when they have nothing left to eat. We've hunted out the forests and fished the rivers. This wolf has come out of the taiga. Wolves can go into a killing frenzy and wipe out an entire herd. This year, they've already killed 30 sheep and 20 goats. Wolves are always hungry after a hard winter. They can follow us for hundreds of kilometers. That's what we're up against out here. After the fall of communism, I bought a hundred sheep from the state farm. Today, my herd has grown to almost 600. My dream is to have a thousand sheep. Still chasing that dream. To have a herd of a thousand means to retire like a prince among shepherds.
Тэгэхээр <laughs> 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 You never know where a wolf will strike. It runs off in one direction, then attacks from another. Out of respect, we Mongols don't say wolf out loud. We call it by its secret names. Shaggy Head, Caterpillar, King of the Mountain. The alpha female is the brains of the pack. We killed a young wolf, but the alpha female took her cubs. She adopted them like a human being would. The wolves came back last night, dragged a colt right out of the pen. An alpha male. Big paws. This is one big bad wolf. He's smarter than most men. He's always a step ahead of me. I will hunt down this wolf and his cubs and sell their skins. Oh, really? With that old gun? You expect him to be just sitting around waiting?
Too far away from my 22. I need a big rifle. One with longer range. We need to disinfect the cattle to kill the parasites. To kill the parasites, we need to throw the animals into a disinfectant bath. Prices have really gone up this year. We need more money. This summer, we survived thanks to our dairy surplus. We made some money selling cream and butter. But we spent it all buying food, tea, tobacco. We won't survive another bad winter like the last one. And to make things worse, these wolves are following us. It's become more difficult to survive as a nomad. Winter storms cut down our herds every few years. We've lost too many animals. At least these wolf skins will bring in some extra cash. The Chinese use wolf parts in their traditional medicine. Wolf meat has become more expensive than mutton. If I capture these wolf cubs, I can sell them this winter. I'll make back money to replace my lost sheep. In mid-September, we start moving towards our winter grounds. We make short migrations called otr, so our animals can make the most out of the pastures and put on fat before the winter. Storing fat will make the difference between life or death out here for both animals and men. I really need to replace the animals I've lost. But raising these wolf cubs for Chinese butchers just doesn't seem right. (laughs) 
A predator even more dangerous than the wolf has come to these steps. The two-legged wolf is worse than the four-legged one. The four-legged wolf may kill sheep and goats, but the two-legged man-wolf devours his own mother earth. Mining companies were drilling over there last time. Now they show up here, on our pastures. There's a kind of grass here that we don't find anywhere else. Good for fattening up the newborn animals. This has been our ancestral right since nine generations. They're offering us $30,000 to go find other pastures. Maybe we should take the money. They pay cash. You're free to do whatever you want. You can sell your share of animals, move to town. You can even go live abroad. You're an adult. You can sell the animals we've worked so hard to raise. I've seen it before. You'll spend everything in a few months and come crawling back without a penny in your pocket. The neighbor's son got a job in a factory. Over there, in a woodmill in Selenge province. Byrus son went to work in the city after his military service. It's never been easy to make a living as a shepherd. During the communist period, we learned the real meaning of work. Just like in the army. Discipline and punctuality, always ready for action. Yeah, we'll never make enough money like this. <laughs> I don't know if we'll make it. The demon of greed is eating up this land. Can there be a future for us nomads in this new world? This wolf is a clever hunter. He has a strategy. He attacks and withdraws. We follow and fire a few shots, but he circles back around us. There's another one. You need to kill this wolf. If you don't, we'll lose everything. He's seeking revenge for the cubs you took away. Men can't measure up to wolves. I saw it happen when I was a young girl. Our neighbors had caught some wolf cubs. Then the wolves came back and slaughtered the whole herd in revenge. This place is a real obstacle course. Difficult to track down these wolves. 
These tracks are from today, those from yesterday. Here's the big male. So it's come down to this. It's between this wolf and me. During the war with the Japanese, the Mongols were surrounded. The enemy had poisoned all the water supplies. Our soldiers were dying of thirst. So my father called the wolves and shot them. Mongol soldiers ate wolf flesh and drank the blood to survive in the trenches. Look at the size of those fangs. He could bring down a horse. Wolves this size are quite rare these days. 
What a foul smell. He sure gave us a run around this year. Bangs like a tiger. <laughs> this was a great wolf. It'll make a powerful talisman. I'll dry his tongue and keep it on my shrine. Old Mongol custom.
нэмэр гарч ирээд ус цаль хитэд эргээд явуу чи. Аваад одоо ийшэ гар. When my time comes, my body will rest on this mountain, waiting for the celestial wolf to devour my remains.